Hey everybody, good morning. It's Rob Moffat. Guys, I don't do book reviews very often, but I read this book. I just finished it the other day, and it's one of the more interesting books I've read in a very long time. It's The Happiest Man in the World, an account of the life of Papa Neutrino by Alec Wilkinson, who's a very good writer. Now, the reason I got interested in this book was for years I had been seeing little clips on the internet about a group of crazy people that built a little raft out of wood and scraps they found in New York City. <laughs> and then they put it in the water and they floated across to Ireland. I thought that was pretty interesting. Usually you have people who are singular, they're alone, they're a little bit kind of batty, and they go off on these trips all by themselves. But this was a group of people. <laughs> it wasn't Thor Hyde all like in Kantiki trying to prove a theory. It was just a group of... <laughs> Crazy people getting a bunch of scrap wood together in New York City and floating across to Ireland. And uh, then slowly I read more and more about this person, Papa Neutrino. His real name is David Perlman. At the time Alec Wilkinson wrote this book, he was 74 years old. And I came to find out not only did Papa Neutrino float across the Atlantic, he also one day decided to give a professional football team a play that <laughs> no one in the history of football had ever thought of or used to uh, win football games. And he actually managed to convince a professional football team to use it. This shows a person of uh, extreme amount of perseverance and determination the third thing that got me interested was I read somewhere in one of the book reviews that Mr. Perlman, or Papa Neutrino, one of the things he believes in is triads. It said, the philosophical underpinnings of Neutrino's existence are what he calls triads, a concept worked out after years of reading and reflection. He believes that each person, to be truly happy, must define his or her three deepest desires and pursue them remorselessly. Freedom, joy, and art are Neutrino's. I'm a big believer in that whatever you think about all day long is what you become, what you do, what you end up <laughs> spending your life on. And uh, I'm very interested in about uh, self-help and people being able to change their life through different habits and, and then doing things differently. And I was hoping that they would have more information about his triads, his system. Also, maybe some photographs about his draft. Unfortunately, there are no photographs in the book, no sketches, and he doesn't really talk about the triads very much. But that's irrelevant. That's what I was hoping was in the book. What the author put in the book, what he thought people would find to be a very wonderful book to read, and that's what it turned out to be. The first few chapters, by the way, most of the chapters are very short, just a few pages at the most. The first three or four pages, after reading the things on the back, page, how wonderful the book was, and the other things I read about the book, I was expecting a lot. And the first three chapters, or three or four, I was not really happy. I wasn't connecting with the author, with Neutrino, um, and to be honest, I felt like the author was trying to bedazzle me with his verbiage, you know, like trying to show that he knew a lot of big words and he was very sophisticated or knowledgeable, and he was. He, I, I, I could see his his effort in his writing, and that's not something I want to see. I want. I don't want to even know that there's any writing going on. I want just to be in, in, immersed in the experience and and the story. And I wasn't getting at the first three, four chapters, but I continued on, and by the third or fourth chapter, it was like things started to settle in. It was like a train on the railroad tracks. It started going down the line. And to the author's credit, that train never went off the tracks again. It just continued through different chaotic experience and, and situations after another. He managed to keep the reader's interest up solidly, going straight down the line continuously all the way to the end. And when I got to the end, I was actually waiting, hoping for more. Um, it was a very... There were times when I would slap my the chair on my, my knee that I was... It was so funny or, or amusing or, or it, it was unexpected. There was a, a lot of wonderful things going on. The person here, 
Pop Lutrino, he's he's a uh, very uh, quixotic, very uh, he's eccentric, but he has a wonderful philosophy of life that's fed him very well. He he's one of those people that I admire that they a lot of people in the world and to some extent everybody I think they they only know how to get to know you know they they don't if if there's something that, that needs to be done or they want to do they come up with a reason it can't be done or they can't do it or where Neutrino lived on the other side of the coin he would always try to find the road to yes he wouldn't find the road to no he would just go to yes he figure out a way to get a football team to to adopt his play he figured out a way to get a group of people to go with him on a raft. They build out of crap and scrap wood and in metal uh, in New York City and float across. You know, he did all these different things. And it was, it's a very interesting person, very interesting story. Um, the chapters are very short. And like I said, once the author gets the story moving down the line, it doesn't stop. And it's, it's a really nice story. Um, and... I'm kind of wondering whatever happened to Neutrino or, or the people he would assemble <laughs> and travel around. There's one story about he was with a group of people and they all became self-taught musicians and that's how they would make their money giving performances. And they didn't know how to play and they were terrible. And, and they went to New Orleans because they were playing that type of music. And some people stopped and let them play and then when they started playing they were booing and really upset because they were so terrible musicians but but some of the musicians in the city uh were kind to them and, and showed them different things they could do to improve their performance and and he said once they once they learned a secret <laughs> they were never broke again <laughs> but uh very interesting person like like i said there's, there's a lot of crazy people who are by themselves you know the uh the starving artist the uh, the person who's kind of his, his ideas are so far out, it's hard for him to hang around other people. But Mundutrina would always end up having a group of people with him that would go off on his, his quest, his journeys, his adventures. And that's a very unique individual who's able to get other people to go along with him and, and stay with him for years in, in some cases. So, very good book. I'm going to read some other books by Alec Wilkinson. Um, I was, I was, it, it, it's not easy to thread that narrative and keep it strong and keep it going right to the end and not falter or get any weak spots. I, I was, like I said, the first few chapters, because I was expecting so much, I didn't really feel I was going to have that interesting time. But once the few chapters went by, it got much better. And it was it was a very enjoyable book. Uh, the Happiest Man in the World, Life of Pablo Neutrino. Um, so, by the way, how he got that name is, he was 50 years old, he was in Mexico, and he was taking care of a dog he found that looked like it was ready to die, and right before it died, he thought it was going to lick his hand, and the dog bit him as hard as it could. <laughs> and then he went to the doctor, and the doctor wouldn't do anything, and for two years, he had so many ailments, he thought he was going to die, and finally he, he survived after two years, but he said, after those two years went by, he felt like he was a completely different person, so he just changed his name. And that's what he came up with, Pop Neutrino. <laughs> so that's the story of 74-year-old David Perlman. A member of the Explorers Club, a mariner, a restless and migratory soul, a friend of the San Francisco Beats, a former preacher, a sign painter, a polymath, a pauper, and a football strategist for the Red Mesa Redskins of the Navajo Nation. <laughs> right, guys. Happiest man in the world. Check it out.